However, there are some guys on the <laughs> I hate this one. Hello everyone, John here from uh, IDK Off-Road. Today we're going to be uh, covering a very, very important topic, trail etiquette. And I can't overstate how important that this topic is. Uh, you'll be using these principles uh, anytime you go wheeling, no matter how big or small your group is. Uh, and all these principles are pretty much universally adopted by every off-road group that's out there. So I've got 10 major points to cover. However, if uh, you can expand on something or if I miss something, please post it down in the comments. And uh, so let's get to it. All right, number one, tread lightly. Uh, this is pretty much the golden rule when it comes to wheeling. Uh, you wanna leave the trail as good or better than when you first got there. There's plenty on this topic. However, I'm gonna cover three uh, points real quick. First of all is uh, garbage. Most of us love hitting the trails to be with friends, have fun with the rigs, and enjoy nature and its beauty. One of the easiest way for a group to lose space is by leaving trash on the trail. Don't be that guy. Take out anything that you brought in. In fact, if you're able, pick up anything you see that others left as well. Trash roo bags are great for this. In fact, a couple chapters uh, of the uh, Pirate Off-Road Nation have a competition each spring to see who can bring out the most bags of garbage left over from the winter. Nothing ruins enjoying nature more than a pile of trash and beer cans on the side of the trail. Secondly, secondly, uh, stay on the trail. Right? There's no need to go tearing up uh, the vegetation off the trail if you don't need to. Uh, we need to protect as much of this land as we can or we're going to lose the privilege of being able to wheel on these trails. Go ahead and have fun for sure. You'll come across play areas and some ditches and side roads that are meant to dirty up your rig. But there's no need to smash through brush and trees if it can be avoided. And lastly on this topic is to air down. If you're going, uh, if you're doing a simple run, on a logging trail or something similar then this doesn't really apply but once you leave that hard pack you should air down your tires this does three things it gives you a much smoother ride it provides you much more traction and uh, along the lines of uh, treading lightly it prevents your rig from digging ruts into the trail all right that was a long one the rest are shorter i swear so moving on to number two spacing in tight and windy trails, you will be traveling pretty close to each other. However, when crossing obstacles, it's important to go one at a time and leave space at the beginning and at the end. So when the rig in front of you starts an obstacle, ensure to stay back a bit in case they need to reverse and try again. You don't want your nose at the base of a rock wall in case they slide back into you, yeah? And also, make sure to move forward enough after the obstacle to allow all other vehicles to line up. This is super important with larger groups as people will get out to you know, watch and film or whatever. Spacing and one person at a time is also super, uh, super important for mud holes or large puddles. If the ground is soft and buddy in front of you gets stuck, you don't want to be going full send into their rear. Number three, keep your eyes on the vehicle behind you. Check your rear view constantly when wheeling in a group. If you lose sight of the rig behind you, stop and wait. The person in front of you should do the same. If there's no word or they don't catch up in a few minutes, then get out and take a look. They uh, might be broke down or even stuck. CBs are a great way of communicating what's going on, but not everybody has them. So you need to be aware if you lose someone. Which brings us to number four, stop at turns. Following the practice of uh, keeping your eyes on the rig behind you, make sure you stop at all turns and make sure the rig behind you sees the direction you're going. It's happened before where the person in front of me didn't stop and uh, I had to sit there and wait for over 15 minutes for them to turn around and come back. Uh, so as you can imagine, if somebody keeps going straight, there's a possibility of them getting straight up lost and uh, you're spending the rest of the day trying to regroup. Number five, getting stuck. There are a few things that you should know when it comes to getting stuck uh, in regards to trail etiquette. First of all, if you need a winch or a pole, it should be you getting in the mud or whatever and hooking up the line, not the person helping you out. You got stuck, you are getting dirty. Also, you should volunteer to pull the winch cable out. Most people will do that themselves and just hand you the last bit as it's their winch, but make the offer at least. 
if there's any digging or piling of rocks, then you should be the one with the shovel as it's your rig. But these are just guidelines. I've had times where I was told to stay in the bison and uh, hold the brake while other piled rocks for me, which is okay for sure. Just make sure to ask if there's anything uh, that you can do for help. Also ask for help if you need it. For example, I've never used a high lift jack before, so I would ask someone uh, more experienced to do it. The off-road community is amazing when it comes to offering help, so don't be afraid to ask. Lastly on this, uh, lastly on this uh, topic, is uh, never ever ever get pulled out by a trailer hitch. Uh, it's not designed for recovery and it could very easily snap. And if this happens, it becomes a projectile and could kill somebody. It has happened, no joke. So uh, make sure that you have uh, front and rear recovery points uh, when you're going wheeling. On to number six, yielding. Who has to yield in a single lane trail in the middle of the woods? I had no idea when I first started, so maybe this will be a little bit helpful. If you're in a Jeep or a truck, then you pretty much have to yield for almost everything. I'll explain. Hikers, uh, ATVers, uh, even horses, they've all got the right of way. Now when you need to yield, uh, as you are most likely in a very tight trail, move off as much as needed to let them through. I was very careful with my words there. Move off as much as needed, not as far as you can. Uh, remember the tri uh, tread lightly principle. Try to stay on the trail. Don't rip up the sides if you don't have to. However, most people on ATVs or even hikers uh, generally do pull off to the side for us, especially if they see it's a big group. But make sure to slow down and uh, make the attempt as they will probably just wave us through since it's easier for them to move aside a little, but make sure you make the attempt. As for horses, uh, there's not a whole lot of them around here. However, uh, if you do come across them, move off to the side, turn off the engine. Uh, they'll appreciate you not trying to spook their horses. As for hills, whoever is going uphill has the right of way. Simple as that. They may need momentum, so move aside. What about flat ground? Well, I've seen letting the bigger group pass and I've seen the opposite. It depends really. Uh, usually the smaller group moves aside as it's just easier. Now, talking about passing, uh, the lead vehicle should let the people who's being passed know how many we have in the group. Uh, this can be done by either rolling down the window and letting them know, or by giving them hand signals, okay? Uh, the rear vehicle should give a closed fist. This means that there's no more people behind us. This is very, very important for very large groups, especially the 20 to 30 rig lines. On to number seven, no booze, no drugs on the trail. This one seems pretty self-explanatory, however, it needs to be said and enforced by all. It's sad to see how many beer cans are on the sides of trails, so clearly this is a rule that needs more traction and more people to buy into. Not only is this illegal, but you're risking not only your life, but everybody else around you. I could give you dozens of scenarios uh, to illustrate how dangerous booze and drugs mixed with a few thousand pounds of machinery climbing rock walls could be, but I'm sure you can imagine it, so I'm just going to leave it at that. So moving on to number eight, uh, something a little bit less serious, pee breaks. Yeah, there's a, a simple practice that almost every off-road group follows when it comes to this. Guys to the left, gals to the right. Try to remember this as it can save you some potentially embarrassing situations. Also, walk in the bush just a little bit. As comfortable as you are with your manhood, others probably don't want to see it. And now on to number nine, CDs. These are great for passing along info. It sucked stopping in a big group and not knowing why or how long we'd be stopped for when we didn't have a CD. However, there are some guidelines when it comes to using CDs. Keep those messages short. Save story time for when you're stopped. Uh, if you have a likely message or you're telling some jokes, leave little breaks uh, here and there. This is to allow somebody to cut in if there's something important to say. Don't jam up the comms. If somebody cuts in or you hear a break, 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 or hold comms or something similar, then stop talking. Someone is cutting in for a reason and the jokes can wait. Also pay attention if uh, someone isn't replying. For example, the rear vehicle could be trying to get a hold of the front one, and if you don't hear a response, relay the message. It could just be a range issue. And number 10, be polite. Not only to those in your group, but people that you encounter on the trail as well. Starting with the people that you encounter on the trail.
trail. If you come across a breakdown or someone who is stuck, offer help. Even if they don't require assistance, the offer goes a long way to keep the off-road community as awesome as it is. Also, if you're away out there and see some hikers, make a quick stop and see if they're good to go, offer a bottle of water or two. On the other hand, don't be an idiot. There's absolutely no need to be revving your engine or spinning out while passing folks on the trail. They don't care and you look like an idiot for trying to show off and you make the group as a whole look bad as well. What about those you encounter on the trail that are upset that you're there telling you a particular trail is off limits or whatever? Could be a hiker, an ATV club. Look, whatever you do, keep your cool. If it's a trail issue, just simply say you'll look into it when you get home and actually do look into it. A popular trail was closed to wheeling this summer because a couple of off-roaders got into it with some folks who were walking. Turns out those folks worked for the municipality or whatever and the trail is now shut down to jeeps and trucks. Being polite and not losing your cool is beneficial to us all. And as you can see, one bad incident can cost us dearly. As for being polite uh, to those in your group, simply follow these uh, trail etiquette guidelines and any that you find folk post in the comments. Also, when it's time to go, don't screw around. I've covered uh, staying by your rig and being ready in my previous video about group runs and it's important to follow. So check it out. So that just about covers it for uh, trail etiquette. I was a bit of a dummy and didn't really research this beforehand. Uh, and I made a few minor mistakes when I first started out. So hopefully this was beneficial to a couple of you. Honestly though, we have an amazing community going when it comes to wheeling and it boils down to the little things like what's mentioned in this video. Uh, let's keep it up and pass on uh, the simple stuff like this to new wheelers like me. Most of all though, keep your eyes and ears open and uh, learn from the group that you're wheeling with. Uh, soak in that knowledge. So that's about it. Cheers and uh, have fun on the trails guys.